สวัสดีครับ and good afternoon once again today is Saturday the 15th of May 2021 globally we have now more than 162 million cases in Thailand we are ranked around number 99 in the world so let's uh, try harder uh, we are also hoping for the continued cooperation of everyone in society as well as the understanding I just like to start off first uh, with uh, one point in terms of understanding. COVID, of course, is very dynamic. Uh, the information changes all the time. There is always new information for us to keep up with, uh, keep uh, up uh, to speed uh, with. So therefore, the reactions, the measures uh, have to be flexible, possibly uh, be flexible in nature at, at, all, at all points, at all, all, all the time. So, for example, when there are changes in the situation, um, sometimes the things that we have planned for in the morning may have to change in the afternoon. So we have to adjust the measures constantly. This is what the Director General of the Disease Control Department uh, highlighted yesterday in his uh, briefing as well. Now, just a case in point is when we say that uh, we'll be talking about one issue uh, today or tomorrow, for, for example. And on the way, while we're trying to gather the information and come up with the uh, finalized measures to talk about, to announce, there might be some changes in the situation or, or, or the, um, uh, the numbers or the something that happened along the way. So therefore, we have to adjust. So that's kind of very normal for such a fluid situation. But meanwhile, while I breathe, while I be before I begin to give a briefing, sometimes questions might come in already on, on social media, as you know, on Twitter or on, 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 in other modes. So please uh, be patient and sort of like wait for the information to, to come out. I'm sure that every nanosecond uh, counts, but it's like you're having a conversation and as you pause for a short while to breathe in, uh, a new, new question com comes in. But if you just wait for a few seconds, you know, the information will be coming out to you in due course. So that's the first point. The second point is about prioritization. Now, when you talk about that something has to be prioritized, it does not mean that those who are not in the first priority are cut out uh, outrightly uh, from the equation, okay? So uh, there, there, it, it, the, the prioritization uh, is there for the process to work in the most effective way. So there has to be prioritization in all measures in terms of all audience groups on which group to uh, perform an operation, a mission first. But it does not mean that it takes away the entire picture. Please look, look at it at, in, in the bigger picture of, of the equation. The mission will include uh, more people than the, those prioritized in the beginning. That, that's what I say. So it's one and the same thing. It does not mean that you hear about prioritization and then after that uh, you, hear, uh, you hear something saying that it'll be applying to all and that, that's something that clashes. No, it doesn't. It does not clash. It's the same thing. It's the same issue. Prioritize first and then the general picture to include everybody in such and such mission. Starting off with the numbers that we have for today, 3,095 cases. Unfortunately, to say that it's reached 3,000 today, out of this number, 2,218 are from local transmission, 877 detected from within prisons, and three from those traveling back from overseas. We have 1,351 new recoveries. So you can see that's much lower than the new confirmed case at 3,000 plus for today. Cumulative, as you see on screen, we're almost reaching the mark of 100,000. Cumulative cases from the very beginning is over 99,000 now, the majority of which, of course, is from the most current wave. Unfortunately, 17 new fatalities for today, making the cumulative 565. Most of the fatalities today are still patients with underlying diseases such as diabetes and high blood pressure. Again, our deepest condolences go to the families. Just some observations from the presentation of Dr. Tuisin. The overall situation in the country, if you look at the overall situation, counting all the provinces, actually, you can see somewhat of a stable and Im clear improvement when you look at the provinces. 
However, when you look at Bangkok, now a case in point, you might see a red or orange color in, in, in the area where Bangkok is on the map on screen. That's a time progression uh, map of the past few days from the 11th of May until today. So if you look at the, the map, you can clearly see that Bangkok is the exception in this equation. Bangkok and some nearby provinces remain the hotspot today. COVID cases have been reported in 61 provinces, and of these, the majority of 42 provinces reported 1 to 10 cases, which is a good sign, meaning that the majority of provinces in the country reported only a few cases, 1 to 10, 1 to 10 cases in that range. Good sign. Now, 16 provinces have reported zero cases, while 15 provinces have reported 16, 11 to 50 cases and four provinces reported more than 100 cases. So meaning that only four provinces reported a high number of cases uh, in the total of cases for, for today. We, we can say that the high risk uh, for infection uh, remain in crowded residential areas, wet markets, and construction sites among people in close contact with infected patients or family members. Now, I'll talk uh, a bit later about the construction site, but firstly, just to note that we have new clusters actually uh, coming up in Suwanapum Airport, the international airport in Bangkok, in different sections of that uh, area among the staff working in Suwanapum Airport. As you know, the Suwanapum Airport, the international airport in, in Bangkok, in Thailand, is where all the international travelers come in and go straight into the quarantine system. The staff there have been affected, um, unfortunately. So now they are being treated uh, in the uh, medical standards that, that we have being put in quarantine and medical treatment. So there's some different sections of the staff, of, of staff working in Suwanapum Airport. Now back to the crowded areas and the construction sites. Just uh, to highlight that the health department of the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration released some very useful infographics on advice for prevention of COVID-19 at construction sites in three languages. We now have in Thai, in English, and in Burmese because the majority of construction workers in Thailand, as you know, are from Myanmar. Now these infographics provide guidelines for both employers, those in charge, for foremen and uh, workers uh, who are all uh, strongly advised to wear face masks, wash hands frequently, eat cooked and hygienic food, and not share any items with others, maintain two meter physical distance and inform their employers or uh, doctors immediately in case of any suspected symptoms. Now, these guidelines, you see one on screen now in uh, Burmese, these will are to, uh, to be distributed among the construction uh, companies uh, around Thailand and especially, especially in Bangkok as well. And of course, close coordination with various associations uh, in this re regard. Uh, just now at, at the end of the Thai briefing, uh, we had uh, received information that the Restaurants Association of Thailand and the Health Department of the, of the uh, Ministry of Public Health are discussing as well regarding certain issues regarding the restaurants. And I'll go to that in a bit uh, later. So firstly, next about the construction site. Now I'll move on to the Corrections Department. So as you have heard, the high number of the cases uh, that are found in prisons. So the Corrections Department is stepping up efforts to contain the outbreak at two prisons, particularly in Bangkok, where nearly 3,000 inmates have now tested positive total for the disease in the past few days. The department will also take nasal swabs and lung x-rays of all inmates as soon as possible. Total nationwide, there are around 310,000 inmates in prisons nationwide, and all inmates across the country have been regulated to wear uh, face masks to sanitize and wash their hands frequently. So this is a rule that all the uh, prisons have uh, set out for the inmates across the country. And the Corrections Department will also increase the chlorine level in tap water in prisons. 
Furthermore, the department will complete the setting up of a laboratory in five days. Also, it will be able to be capable of testing 1,500 inmates a day. Some prisons are also arranging for vaccines uh, for their inmates in coordination with the vaccine uh, vaccination plan. Now, moving on to the relaxation of restriction measures, which includes, as I mentioned, a piece of information about restaurants, which the CCSA and the health ministry is discussing with the Restaurants Association and other uh, entities involved. So firstly, the CCSA, about zoning first, is considering uh, easing restrictions in red zone provinces and also in terms of the rezoning, there will be a change in the categorization. So for minimum, uh, so sorry, for maximum and strict controlled areas, which is a dark red zone, formerly there were six provinces. There will be four now, which include Bangkok, Batum Thani, Samut Prakan, and Nontaburi. For the maximum controlled, which is the red, the first one was dark red, this one is red, from 45 provinces, it will turn out to be 17 provinces, so a fewer provinces to be recategorized in that red group. Now for the controlled, um, that, the number of provinces is going to increase from 26 to 56 uh, provinces. The, in terms of the easing of restrictions per, per se, it is considered based on the several factors, such as the outbreak characteristics, the terrain, the number of people at risk of spreading the virus, and number of vaccinated persons. So on these updated me measures, there will be the rezoning, as I, I mentioned, based on the criteria of, that I mentioned just now. And uh, in the maximum and strictly controlled uh, zones from six to four provinces, as mentioned, those are actually provinces categorized because they have more than 100 cases uh, per day. Now, all provinces will enforce mask wearing in public areas, and in the maximum and strictly controlled zones, the CCSA meeting this morning proposed that restaurants will be able to receive customers up to 25% or one quarter of their capacity until 9 p.m. Takeaway would be allowed in those zones until 11 p.m. and the serving of alcoholic beverage still banned. Working from home is extended another two weeks while most of the other measures would remain the same in, those, in that zone, the dark, dark red zone. And the CCSA will provide further details uh, in, the, uh, in due course once the Prime Minister has considered this proposal for the updated measures. So we're awaiting for the final approval of this proposal. The fastest that it can happen, that restaurants in Bangkok in particular can uh, receive 25% of dine-in customers, the fastest that this will happen is when the Prime Minister uh, approves this, which may be possibly the earliest uh, tonight, Saturday night or Sunday night. Now, moving on to the issue about field hospital, we have the opening of Bussarakam Field hospital, hospital, wherein yesterday the Prime Minister presided over the opening ceremony of this field hospital in Nontaburi's Impact Myung Tong Thani Exhibition Center as part of the efforts to handle the outbreak and, of course, to supply the number of beds necessary. Uh, this field hospital set up to, in cooperation with several, several parties and will be under the supervision of the Public Health Ministry. It can accommodate up to 1,200 patients immediately and has space for another three to 5,000 beds. So that will not be an issue. It is also equipped with resp uh, respirators and for patients with uh, severe symptoms. In terms of the vaccination, as of yesterday, I'd like to start off first by saying that Thailand administered more than 2.2 million doses already, of which 1.4 million are the first doses and almost 800,000 the second dose. We've received actually in total uh, over 2 million doses, uh, around 2.4 million doses. And if you see that 
we have inoculated uh, 2.2 million. Therefore, the efficiency of giving the vaccine jabs is not an issue for Thailand. We can do that very, very fast as soon as the vac vaccines uh, supply arrive in uh, according to the vaccination plan. And also in addition, another 500,000 doses of Sinovac also arrived in Bangkok. And you see that uh, on screen. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Public Health also said yesterday regarding the challenges for the equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines must be reduced. The challenges to access must be reduced. Now, people can access registration for COVID-19 vaccine via the MAWPROM application, and various organizations can make group appointments. Now, for foreign nationals, for non-Thai nationals, the application for registration is in the development process. Also, one way is also through the walk-in COVID-19 vaccination service, which will operate, operate nationwide uh, soon. What you have seen in the news is actually the soft opening, so to, so to speak, the test run for the walk-in. And for walk-in vaccination services, uh, provinces that are ready to provide the vaccines can commence operations uh, immediately. Now, just a case in point first is that in the beginning of this briefing, I mentioned about the fluidity, the flexibility that we all must have because the COVID situation is very, very dynamic. Now, in the beginning, we planned to vaccinate, begin the official vaccination for people that are not 60 year old uh, or have the seven underlying diseases for the, uh, for the general public. We planned for that for June, as, as you would know. Now the situation has changed because actually the supply of vaccines arrived, are arriving earlier than we planned. So in May, which is this month, uh, and towards the end of uh, May, uh, next week towards the end of May as, as well, we have begun to start up with the new plans for walk-in vaccination because the supply has arrived earlier than usual. Now, next week, um, the ne next week, the walk in the official walk in scheme would uh, be beginning that I believe that it will begin uh, soon, perhaps around next week. And the director general of the disease control department said that in principle, foreign nationals can also walk in for this vaccination in the announced locations, locations that would be announced. So once again, official walk-in uh, schemes would be starting very soon, I believe next week uh, or around before the end of May, because the supplies of vaccines have arrived earlier than usual. So when that is announced of where and when the official walk-in scheme begins, it will, that will be announced. Uh, the facilities are being discussed right now to have uh, ample space to have the proper facilities. When that is announced, uh, in principle, foreign nationals can also walk in. However, to ensure, naturally, to ensure the efficient facilitation for foreign nationals and to prevent any language miscommunication, separate facilities for foreign nationals are also being discussed. So by the time that the walk-in schemes are officially uh, open, hopefully we'll have separate facilities for foreign nationals to avoid any language miscommunication. So the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Department of Disease Control is discussing this as we speak to plan for such facilities in due course. So as soon as the MOPROM application is ready for foreign nationals, we'll let you know. As soon as the walk-in scheme is officially open for uh, Thai nationals with all the new venues, the additional venues rather, we will hopefully be having a separate facility for foreign nationals. So I'd like to move on to the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration food delivery project for medical personnel and staff who worked uh, in affiliated hospitals and field hospitals. So this is a very good project by the BMA, mobile kitchen units, having meals, uh, uh, some couple of times a week for healthcare workers. Now they sent out uh, thousand plus boxes uh, to six hospitals, and uh, they'd like to sincerely thank also members of the public who donated the ingredients for for cooking. So that's a very good thing to uh, learn about that uh, we are taking care of our medical 
uh, personnel. Now, just some questions on social media outlets. There were a few questions today. I'd just like to touch on perhaps one of this, that uh, is there a limit to the daily number of vaccines that will be administered to walk-in patients, when walk-in patients, when the scheme officially begins? Now, there'll be a set number of vaccines which can be administered uh, per day in each uh, vaccine location. If you go to a vaccine, vaccine walk-in walk, walk vaccination center, and the number of vaccines had already reached its limit, you will be given a cue card for the next day. So that's very good to hear. So I hope that I've uh, given you uh, useful information. I realize that, of course, we have to be very patient, uh, especially for foreign, foreign nationals, because we're trying our best to complete the registration process uh, application that foreign, foreign nationals can uh, make use of. Of course, the best way to register for a vaccine when it is ready is, is through the MOPROM application because one, you will have a set time and date. Uh, two, you'll be sure that you'll get the vac vaccination with no long lines and queues. And of course, uh, not risking yourselves going to crowded, uh, congested areas. So the best way is MOPROM. However, for walk-in, in principle, yes, uh, foreigners can also uh, avail of that opportunity. But for the efficiency, for the best uh, facilitation in terms of language barrier, in terms of uh, all those possible miscommunication, it's very important that uh, medical data is accurate. You will have staff talking to foreign nationals and uh, recording the information before the vaccination. Uh, process. So that is being uh, sorted out uh, in terms of a separate uh, center. So please be rest assured that uh, you are in our plans. It just might take some time. Uh, the walk-in for Thai nationals have not officially started. Actually, the official one would be in, in June or end of May. What you have seen in the news is actually the test run in uh, some areas. Uh, we have found some, some congestion and some, some issues in terms of the, the process. So as the Director General of the CDC mentioned, the official one will start uh, soon with more facilities uh, around the country for, for this because we have to change our plans and uh, adjust our plans constantly. The supply is actually uh, here, uh, ample supply here and actually uh, earlier than, than we planned. So just to conclude with a gentle reminder that as COVID-19 is spreading around the world, we hear of misinformation, fake news, conspiracy theories, rumors. They've all gone viral on social media and other outlets. Finding reliable information in this digital age is very challenging when fake news, uh, hyperbole are rife. So let's work together to curb this infodemic once you have seen a piece of information to consume data, just take a minute to search on it, Google it, evaluate uh, to see the, about the authenticity, to distinguish it, uh, distinguish from opinion, opinion from fact, rumors from the uh, verified uh, information. Th these simple steps could help a lot in preventing any unnecessary uh, stress that one may have or to prevent any um, fake information being spread f further when you send it, uh, forward it to your friends and, and colleagues. And all of this are efforts that we can help each other to fend off the infodemic and be part of fighting off COVID. So this is basically the summary I have for, uh, for you today. Please continue to stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you tomorrow. Sorry, Kap.